It's a brand new week and the MX-5 Cup has moved on to the Suzuka International Circuit on World Sim Series. This week, the racing comes from the East layout, which is mainly around the first sector of the main track. I managed to jump on for a few races last night, and this last one was very interesting indeed. Starting off on the back foot and in a really bad position, how far can we really get in this race? So without further ado, let's jump into the race and take a look for ourselves. Okay, we are on the grid and we are about to get underway here in this Division 3 race. We're in Division 3 this time around because I didn't get a chance to actually do any practice session. I was like a very last minute decision to join this final race. And we're sliding at the back because we've just, we were impeded every qualifying lap. I just thought we was like getting a good run and then somebody would block us. Anyway, we have uh, gained a position here as we move through the field into turn one here. Very careful with these uh, MX-5 cars. The tyres take a couple of laps to warm up. So you have to be very careful on these first couple of laps as people are kind of weaving about in front of us at the moment. As we enter the S's for the first time here. Very, like I say, trying to be aware of what's going on as a guy goes off to our left. And then the guy who that who's involved in tries to recover and goes straight into somebody on the infield. We try and take avoid in action, but we can't. And ultimately, although we have gained a couple of places here, um, we are basically not in a good position as we start off here at Suzuka East. And um, we head around the end of the S's here into the final corner onto lap two. And lap two has some interesting footage to show as well as we start the lap. So keep an eye on the guy in front here. Um, I felt... And you'll probably see here that we were a lot quicker than the car in front here. As you see in the S's, we'll close right up. And I try and take some moves here as we enter into turn one. You'll see the guy stays out wide as we kind of like try to take a bit of a tighter line on this second part of the apex here. So we're going for a move down the inside. He weaves one side, he weaves the other side, and then he weaves back onto the racing line, just completely blocking me off. So I'm like, okay. I um, uh, see you going wide again. I'm going to try and go and move down the inside. But no, once again, he turns right in front of me. So, yeah, at this point, I'm like, okay, I can see how this is going down. And it's just giving me no confidence at all with this guy. So like, I'm, I could have gone there, but I kind of hung back. Just I was almost like anticipating him weaving across, which eventually he did. He weaved back to the left. Um, but when you're racing, you need to feel like you've got confidence with the people that you are racing around. And that guy just did not fill me with any confidence whatsoever. But I did submit a race report after the race to the stewards just to say that I felt he was unfairly like weaving and impeding and blocking me. Um, anyway, on to lap number three here and into turn one. So we know what this guy is likely going to be doing. I mean, watching back here, it almost looks like he's on a pad the way he's got some jerky movements as the guy goes off on the infield to the left. You can kind of tell sometimes by the way he turns into a corner. It's very sudden and very, like, snappy. So it makes me wonder if he's a pad player as opposed to a wheel player. Anyway, we're um, thinking about going for a move on the inside, but I get a little bit too greedy here, and we actually spin it on the curb. We're off on the grass, and unfortunately, that puts me all the way back to second last. I've had a couple of people drop out of the race so far. So we're uh, six seconds ahead of the guy in front and four and a half behind so we have quite a bit of work to do if we want to get anything back from this race now. So at this point, the tyres are just about there in temperature-wise. So it's like, okay, let's see what we can do and whether we can like, just get our head down, get consistent, and you know get something out of this race. So we're four behind as we cross over the start-finish line on to lap number four here. Massively gaining into turn one. But... To go back to like what I was talking about with the guy that um, was blocking, you, you have to feel like you have confidence with those people around you. If you feel like they're going to take you out, then it just puts you on like a nervous kind of mindset. And you just, you don't go, you don't want to go for moves. And then almost like you, you're losing out because you don't want to go for those moves. So it's um, it's a frustrating thing with racing you know everybody wants a uh, fair racing and these setups like world sim series like we're racing here they try and promote fair clean racing 
as we uh, cross over the line for lap number five. We're now only three seconds behind, gained um, just over a second there on the guy in front. Pulled up to nine seconds ahead of the guy behind. But yeah, you just want to feel like you have confidence in everybody around you and that they are going to you know, follow the rules like only one move as opposed to like weaving across the track and, and blocking and different bits and pieces. But anyway, into the S's section we go. The, the guys in front are about half a second apart, and we have now closed the gap for two seconds. So we are gaining, gaining, gaining. We're gaining so much time through these S's section as the guy in front gets um, ahead. So that puts us now, the guy in front of us is the guy who is weaving and blocking. So I'm already thinking, okay, this guy, um, not the cleanest of racers, so we've got to take it very, very carefully. But we are right on the back of this group as we get a snap of oversteer on exit. Not great. Puts a little bit on the back foot. The guy... Um, three cars ahead has just had a moment as well, so that's brought him right back into this fight as we are half a second now behind this pack and 12 seconds ahead of the guy behind. Don't think we have to worry too much about the guy behind anymore. So, yeah, I'm, I'm already thinking nervously here. Okay, just sit back, but be ready to pounce because we've seen these guys have been in a bit of a tussle as the two guys in front go wide. There we go. There it is. There's the three car pile up, so I'm trying to Stay to the left-hand side as much as I can. There's another guy off here on the infield on the left as well. So, out of nowhere, we have just gained four places. All from just being a little bit careful there and thinking about what might happen, knowing what had already unfolded um, in the race. So, again, time to get our head down and we can kind of try and catch the guys in front. We're five seconds ahead now of the guys behind. So, we've got a bit of breathing room, but we are... 14 seconds that we need to catch me at 13 as we come across the line even down to 12 wow we're getting like two seconds there through the final corner on the guy in front but yeah we're at this point we're up to fourth place which is absolutely crazy from starting at the back getting involved in that instant having an off and then being blocked and impeded all of those things but we are still now up to fourth which goes to show if you can stay out of trouble and if you can keep it consistent in these races you know you don't have to rush into it lap one the, the race isn't won in, in turn one so many people say that in sim racing and in racing in general you know don't be over aggressive bide your time and just keep it consistent keep it on the track and you know it will come to you and, and quite clearly at this point it is coming to me as the guy behind has um really dropped off there 13 seconds now ahead we have um we've come out the final corner i think the time is going to come up down a little bit we lost a bit of time actually on that final corner we was down to about seven seconds so we had a slow final corner there but over the line we've gained another second compared to the last lap and um we push on even further here one thing as well that's become very apparent to me as i've been um racing um these races is i feel like as we go very very wide here and uh, just managed to keep it in track limits i feel like i need to work on my like close quarters racing i feel like because i don't want to ruin anybody else's experiences i'm a bit too much of a pushover and by that i mean i don't I, I kind of back out of things and maybe leave too much room and i guess it's probably like my inexperience with sim racing at this low, like level because i've never done this before but i kind of need to be more aggressive i think um not like overly aggressive and can you know to be not fair so i guess you could probably say i need to be aggressive but fair and i think that's probably like the biggest thing i need to work on in my racing at the minute because i do feel at times like it's too easy i, I give people too easy a time to overtake me and i need to kind of just yeah just just hold my hold my ground almost a little bit more but that's only going to come in times we get like it massively wrong in turn one turning way too early and try and connect correct sorry um that's only going to come in time as we do more and more racing and hopefully you know it becomes more naturally and and my skills progress but you know it's kind of what i want to share with you guys you know these sorts of things so that if anybody out there watching as we go over a bit of a moment there manage to keep it on track off the curb um any of that buddy out there who is watching who is able to provide me any like tips or feedback or anything please do because um I really do as i keep keep saying in these videos i really want to improve myself in um the world of racing anyway we come across the line again the, the gap has kind of stabilized a bit we've lost quite a bit of time there we're back up to like 11 seconds behind 
And um, 20, 20 seconds or so behind the leader. I think the leader's actually had enough. The, looking at that delta there, the time is coming right down. As by the end of the straight, we're only six and a half seconds behind before we hit the braking spot. But you look at those times and you kind of think, what could have been if we had just managed to avoid that turn one incident? We wouldn't have got stuck behind that guy impeding. We probably wouldn't have had the other off because we were getting frustrated behind him. And we could be like right up there actually battling for the win, I think, in this race. So, yeah, missed opportunities, but lessons learned. Definitely lessons learned as we come around the S's again. We are gaining massively on the guy in front. I think he's had an off. He has. There he is. He's had an off into the final corner. So we are right on the precipice here of taking a podium place, P3, less than a second away. So... Let's see how we handle this one, guys. We come down the start, finish straight, trying to get a bit of slipstream. It might be a bit too far away from him. Slipstream. Yeah, we are. He's actually pulling away here. The gap up to 0 0.9 seconds as we enter turn one here. See if we can close into turn one. It's gone a little bit wide, but I kind of got my downshifting wrong there, and it kind of caused uh, what caused me to like come away from the apex, unfortunately. So into the S's we go. I'm going to keep it as much power on as I can and nice and tidy and hit as many apexes as we can. He's drifted out wide, so it's not going to help his entry into the final section here of the S, but I've drifted out wide and my turning was a little bit late. Managed to kind of hit some sort of apex, so we've kept the time distance steady here through the S's section. We turn it in and he's gone wide into the final corner as we just about avoid contact there with him. And... Yeah, there we go. We are up now to P3. As the guy who is, as you see on the, the leaderboard there, the real-time leaderboard, the guy at the top is actually the guy in last place. That's the guy we had the, uh, the blocking with and the impeding with on lap two. So we're only 12 seconds off the lead at this point. And um, we was almost gifted that um, P3. As we kind of feel like we've been gifted a lot of these places, you know, I, I go back to what I said earlier on, just keeping the car on the track, keeping consistent and trying to keep yourself out of trouble, you know, you can recover in these races, even if you think everything is going you know, horribly wrong and you're at the back of the field, never give up, guys, because anything can happen in a race and you can quite easily get yourself back into it. I was very nervous, though, on the previous lap, though, as we saw him, like he was recovering onto the track and I was like, I came off the power a little bit to try and get as far to the right-hand corner so, right hand side of the track as I could as I kind of think this was the last lap so I kind of crossed the line and like oh we've got one more lap to go so not to worry but yeah I was really really worried I could see he was recovering and, and he wasn't stopping he was coming right back onto the track and I knew the minute he got a bit of steering angle on the grass it would send his car career into me so managed to stay out of it unfor uh, luckily not unfortunately luckily we managed to keep out of it but we're on the final lap here as um We've got uh, another guy off here. I think that guy has, um, yeah, he was a lap down and I think he's just retired. So, yeah, all in all, um, a good recovery. Managed to stay out of trouble after the um, first couple of laps and keep our head down and just watch all the carnage unfold. But there we go, guys. As we come around the final corner, it's a P3 and our first podium on WSS. And like I say, if we'd have managed just to keep ourselves out of trouble, what could have been? We could have been fighting for the lead in this one. So there we go, guys. My first podium in WSS. Not without incidents, but I will take it nonetheless. I'm sure as the week goes on and I race more and more at Suzuka, I'll be able to get a bit more competitive there. So hopefully I'll bring you some more action from Suzuka real soon and we can even have a bit more of that close quarter racing where I'm getting a bit more confident. Or who knows, we could even aspire to get in a P2 or that elusive maiden win. As always, guys, all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Be sure to leave comments down below if you've got anything you'd like to say, any feedback or improvements that might help me in my driving. But until next time, see ya.